Well, good morning to everyone. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. And for those of you who are on Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you this morning to our time of worship at St. James Pentecostal. For those of us who are in the house who want to stand, please, as we begin our service, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is certainly a joy to be in the house of the Lord. It's certainly a joy to be alive. So many persons didn't make it to see this wonderful day. So we are here this morning to give God praise and glory and honor. So we just want to open in prayer this morning. We say thank you, Father, for your goodness. Could we just bless the Lord? We thank you this morning for your grace. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient and for your truth that is made perfect in our weakness. This morning, God, we thank you that we can say like the psalmist, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So God, we thank you for the opportunity of coming together like this, dear God. Indeed, we pray that you will so have your way in the midst of us. Father, those that are coming to church, we pray that you will hasten your footstep, cause them to come here safely, oh God. Those that are, oh God, hallelujah, on the platform of Facebook and YouTube, God, that you will minister to them through the airwaves, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We come against the plans, the works, and the devices of the enemy even now. We pray that, God, you will arise and that the enemies will be scattered and we declare your awesomeness in this house today in the name of Jesus. We declare holy visitation. We declare, oh God, that your purpose, your plan, oh God, will be performed in the midst of us, dear God. Healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Breakthroughs will take place, dear God, in Jesus' name. So we bless you even now. And we say, God, have your divine way in Jesus' mighty name. And let the house say, Amen. And Amen. And this time I welcome the worship team who will come and minister to us in worship at this time. We could encourage them for those of us who are here this morning. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, let's continue to praise him. Let's continue to lift up that name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you, God. Hallelujah. We bless that name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Who is like unto you? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The psalmist say from the rising of the sun down to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus.
to God. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We adore you, oh God. Who is like unto our God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, sweet, sweet Lord, hallelujah. Wonderful Father, beautiful Redeemer, my sweet all in all. Hallelujah, oh, lover of my soul, hallelujah. You are the bishop and the shepherd of my soul, and I worship you. I worship you. You are my all in all. God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We bless your name. We magnify you. We honor you. We hallow the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We magnify you. We stand in awe of you. Father, for who you are, hallelujah, glory be to Jesus, Hosanna, hallelujah.
right to say forever all my days hallelujah forever all my days forever all my days when i come into his presence when i'm with him hallelujah forever all my days hallelujah it's hallelujah it's hallelujah hallelujah it's the highest praise it's the highest praise that we can give to him hallelujah jesus hallelujah my lord hallelujah my king hallelujah my sweet sweet redeemer oh i adore you lord hallelujah jesus hallelujah lord hallelujah you are worthy you are worthy jesus hallelujah hallelujah jesus god we bless your name father we magnify you god hallelujah 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 the psalmist said while i have breath in me i will praise him because the grave can't praise him the grave can't praise him so let's make it hallelujah as long as we have breath the same breath he breathed into us let's give it back to him and praise hallelujah 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 continue worshiping as we bring on our pastor hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah amen pleasant good morning to all the saints gathered i greet you in the name of our lord the savior and soon coming king jesus christ amen before you have your seat those of you who are in house let your neighbor say good morning give them a warm smile and say god bless you even when you're finished the person in front of you behind you they have finished amen you may have your seats and i do want to welcome those of you who have joined us on facebook and those of you who would join us on youtube i want to encourage you to like our page subscribe to us you know be a part of the saint jim pentecostal family we do want to notify you when we are on so that you won't forget so that you should like our page so you should subscribe to us so that you can be a part of what god is, is doing amen i do apologize for those of you who probably joined at nine but our service went a bit late this morning amen um because we are having anointing service um in this season of all of us praying and fasting seeking the lord amen for greater things in and through our lives and we thank god for all that he has done for us amen and he has brought us to, to this point and one of my points of celebration for this week of service is that persons were filled with the Holy Spirit or baptized with the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. Some of them were testifying in our service last night and, and we do want to thank God for, for what he has been doing. Amen. You know, we can't lose our Pentecostal distinctives. You know, some people want us to become ashamed of it. Somebody say, I heard somebody, a couple of people, more than one preaching, saying that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit, you know? And, you know, the truth is, some of us, before we were even baptized in water, we just got saved. We got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I, I asked it in the first service, who got baptized with the Holy Spirit before you were baptized in water? A couple of people lifted their hands. Amen. All right, the next person lifted their hands. Amen. Because, you many. God doesn't, don't have to wait for you to be matured spiritually um, to fill you. And, and, and there's a greater place of, of, of experiencing God in a new dimension. And God wants all of us to get to that place. Amen. So we do thank God for what he's doing. I do want to remind you, um, um, of, of, just a few announcements quickly before we lift our morning's tithes and offering. Um, just to remind you, that we have prayer on the Zoom platform um, tomorrow, the Lord's willing. Tuesday, we will not be having any Bible study, but on Friday, we have in-house prayer meeting. All right, so no Zoom. So in-house prayer meeting come Friday, the Lord's willing. You know, the first two services clap. I didn't hear the service clap when they... <laughs> you know, six o'clock service, the people were clapping. Amen this morning as... I hope you all come pray meeting on Friday, the Lord's willing. Amen. Uh, and then I want to, to um, remind you that we have, or to inform you that we have crusade. Come the 31st of January, we are starting our in-house crusade. 
um, 7 p.m. each night. We don't start on the Monday, but on the Tuesday, it's the 31st of January, and we go through the week. We have uh, as our speaker, um, Bishop Victor Gill, he told me he would come, amen, for those days, and I am thankful, amen, for him to come and declare the good news. So I want you to invite your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, those of you who are viewing online, I want to encourage you to be at St. James. We are having crusade, amen, from the 31st of January, as we believe in the Lord, for a harvest of souls. In the name of the Lord. God is still able to save. He's still able to keep. He's still able to satisfy. In fact, when we look at John the Baptist ministry, who Jesus declared is the greatest of prophets, there was not one miracle that is recorded in John's ministry. But there are many souls that came unto him who came to know the Lord through his ministry. And one of the greatest miracles anybody could experience is that miracle of salvation. Amen. And there are thousands upon thousands of people who are out there who need to experience the miracle of salvation. Amen. And somebody knows, because somebody who have experienced that wave their hand, I, I, I just feel to testify, but I, I, I don't have time to testify. So somebody give me a wave offering, amen. What it is to be just born again, and your life just change. You know, drug addict, you change. Alcoholic, you change. Chain smoker, you change. You know, carnival baby, you change. Hallelujah. Amen. I get excited as I talk about it. Amen. One of the greatest joys of even ministry is seeing people come to know Jesus. Amen. So let's, let's, let's pray. The harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. So we need you to go and tell somebody and invite them to come to be a part of the crusade. Amen. Also, we have camp coming up. Camp Breakthrough. Camp 2023. Camp Breakthrough. Amen. It's going to be held at the Valencia um, Secondary School, and we are all excited about it. You know, last week I said, you know, Sister Jills came and she made an announcement where she said if we could just get enough money to pay for the food. So she's trying to raise how much? 30, food and transport. 30000 for the food and 40000 and 10000 for the transport. $40,000 in all, you know, as I was... You know, even those of you who may be online, amen, when the account number comes up for, for, um, for offering time, and you would want to give the whole 40 or 20 or 10, you can do that. Amen. Just put it in the caption there where you say that you will and put camp on it, so it will go directly towards the camp. Amen. Amen. So I think that's it for the announcements for now. Um, I just want to, let me invite you to stand so we can lift the morning's tithes and offering. And I want to, I've been encouraging persons, and I read it in, in, in the book of um, Genesis once again with Jacob. When he met with the Lord, saw that ladder resting upon the earth, ascending to heaven, and, and at the end of it, Jacob, Jacob said, God, I will give you a tenth of all that I have through this blessing that you will bless me. Before Jacob, his grandfather, Abraham, you know, um, said to Melchizedek, I will give you one tenth of all that I have. Before Moses introduced tithing through the law, persons were given tithes unto the Lord long before. So you see those TikTok videos and those Facebook sermonettes that people telling you that tithing is not for today and that's our Old Testament principle and, all, and, and we're no longer under the law. Before there was law, there was tithing. Some people don't go to Bible school again, you know. That's our next problem. Alright? They'll go to, they'll go to their I want, let me just say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, 
we want to give unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of giving. We thank you, dear God, for being all God. You are no man's debtor. We come against every lie of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. God, that he will touch us, your people. And that the anointing of God, as the power of God, and the grace of God will rest upon us. So even as we give, God, that which we give, it will come back to us. Uh, press down, shaken together, and running over. We say, thank you. We're not praying for it to come. When we give, we know it will come in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for all the blessing. That God, we as your people, we will shine forth in this world. Oh God, as gems, oh God, as your people, light of the world, with the blessing of God upon us. Help us to go forth in that blessing and to receive it this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. There's that account number that is on the screen. Write it down. Those of you who may not have it, amen, write it down. It's our Republic Bank Limited account number. So you can take it down and you can give to us online or when you go to the bank, you can deposit into that account in the name of St. James Pentecostal. The worship ministers are coming to lead us in worship, and the ushers will wait on us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You remain standing, turn your Bibles with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. And we read from verse 36. And we also turn to Luke chapter 22. And we read verses 43 and 44. It's the same story, but I include from Luke what Matthew did not record. Matthew 26, reading from verse 36. And here beginneth the reading of God's word. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter, the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. 
tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again. And he prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Luke chapter 22 and reading verses 43. 3 and 44. And the Bible says, referring to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I want to share with you this morning on Jesus' greatest hour of prayer. Jesus' greatest hour of prayer. Amen. Bow your heads with me as we go before God. Gracious, merciful, and loving God, we bow in your presence. We thank you, dear God, for this opportunity whereby we could look into your word. The entrance of your word, it brings light. And many times we stumble through life because there is no word, there is no light. We walk in darkness. We walk in the philosophies of men. But God, this morning, let your word come alive. Let it take residence within our own spirit. Let us move from where we are to where we need to be. Oh God, we take authority against every spirit of distraction, everything that will seek to impede. Oh, oh God, steal this word in the name of the Lord Jesus. That the word will come alive and be seed within the hearts of your people. And God, that seed will take root and will grow and germinate and, and bring forth fruit in its season. We thank you, O oh God, for this blessing in the name of Jesus. So, Father, bless this witness. Charge it with your power. And let the anointing of your spirit have free course in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. You may have your seats. Jesus went into his greatest hour of prayer as he faced his greatest hour of temptation. As he said to God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but as you will. He faced his greatest hour of desertion. The Bible says in verse 56 that all the disciples forsook him and they fled when the soldiers came. He faced his greatest hour of humiliation as the Roman soldiers spat in his face, struck him with their fist, and slapped him with the palm of their hands, not even realizing that he was slapping the creator of the world. He faced his greatest hour of persecution as he was whipped with a catonine whip, a type of whip with a multi-tail. It's, it's one whip, but it had nine tails or nine whips at the end of it so that uh, when you would get one lash, you would really get nine lashes. And at the tip of each of those uh, secondary whips, there would be a piece of bone or a piece of metal attached to it. It was believed that 
if someone get 40 strikes, they would die. So they give them 39 to preserve their life. Jesus, we understand, got 39 lashes. But every lash was nine lashes. So 39 by 9 is 351 lashes he received. And every time he received a lash, it may just be a piece of flesh from his body that the bone and the metal pulled from off him. Amen. As he got lash after lash after lash. And it is said that uh, he was not only sentenced, amen, as we understand rather, it's not, he was not only sentenced to being flogged by Pilate, but also to be crucified. Very rarely someone would have been sentenced to flogging and crucifixion. Uh, but they sentenced Jesus to both flogging and now crucifixion. And he faced his great hour of persecution as he went to Calvary's cross, being nailed to that cross, hanging on that cross. But he also faced his greatest hour of victory. As he said in Luke chapter 19 and verse 30, he said, it is finished. It is accomplished. His greatest hour of prayer preceded his greatest hour of temptation, of desertion, of humiliation, of persecution, and of victory. Could I say to us, without victory in Gethsemane, there would not have been any victory in Calvary. And many times we as God's people, we want to have victory without Gethsemane. Jesus' destiny was Calvary. It was his unavoidable path. The prophecies were written awaiting its fulfillment. The scene was set. His betrayers were at hand. He is the Passover Lamb of God that is to take away the sins of the world. It's incumbent for him to have victory in Gethsemane. Because his path was Calvary. And many times we who have been called, and, and in fact all of us are called. You know, sometimes people operate as if you know, they're, they're just in church passing time. You know, somebody, some people look like they're sleeping. So, so help me preach this morning. Touch somebody and say, you're not here passing time. Not here passing time. God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And you know it might just be what we are doing presently. There is something greater for us to do. Many of us who might be. You know might have even. Been, been you know priding ourselves in the excellence. Because we hear it so much. Priding ourselves in, in the excellent work that we do. We still. Have not been fulfilling. What God has called us to you. To do. Amen. I tell your neighbor, pastor, talking to you. You have not fulfilled. We have not fulfilled what God has called us to do. All through the Bible, we see individuals facing the great hour of prayer. We see Nehemiah praying for restoration in Nehemiah chapter 1. The Bible said he prayed and fasted. Day and night, when he heard what is happening to Jerusalem, that it's left in ruins. And the scripture says when he heard that, he wept and he prayed and he fasted. We see Moses praying for the children of Israel. And he made a golden calf. And he began to worship it. And the judgment of God was now coming upon the children of Israel. And Moses cried unto God and he says, God, this is your people. Spare their lives. What, what will the people say? You have brought them out of Egypt to destroy them in the wilderness. And Moses had a great, his great hour of intercession for the children of Israel. What about Hannah's prayer for a child? 
And Hannah went into the temple. And the Bible says her lips were moving, but no words were heard as the intensity of her spirit was echoing loudly. The high priest thought she was drunk with wine, not realizing that she was interceding and calling upon God for a miracle. Jonah's prayer from the belly of the large fish or the whale. Three days and three nights in the depths of the ocean. And he's there praying. And this, this whale wasn't a cartoon whale that we see. You know, you, you, know, you have some cartoon whales where the people make a little fire and they're fishing inside of the wheel. And they're just a wait, a waiting time to escape or something. This wasn't any cartoon fish. There was no light, no visibility for three days as he was there in the depths of the ocean in the belly of a fish. And Jonah's great hour of prayer was there as he was praying for deliverance. And I believe because after a particular period of time, you would, you would fall into unconsciousness to sleep. But as he would fall uh, into sleep, amen, he would awake again and he would begin to pray again and call upon God. You see Elijah's great prayer on Mount Camel. As he prayed for rain, after three and a half years, when there was no rain, no dew, the atmosphere was dry. And he prayed the first time, and there was no rain, and he prayed again the second time, and he prayed, and he prayed until the seventh time, until it rained, because he was praying until it rained. We see Esther's prayer for deliverance. Esther said to Mordecai, go and tell the Jews that is in Shushem, go and tell them to pray and fast, to neither eat nor drink for three days. And I myself and my handmaidens, we are going to do likewise. And they prayed. I don't know how many thousands of Jews there were. But I believe it was plenty Jews, thousands of Jews. And everybody who facing the gallows now, everybody, hey, no time to eat. But it's a time to fast. It's a time to pray. We see David's great hour of prayer for repentance. As he cried out in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. As he called upon God for forgiveness. But Jabez who was in a demised place. And many times we find ourselves in a demised place. A place where we probably were born into poverty. A place where we were born into, you know, weakness. But the Bible says, Jabez called upon the Lord and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him as he called upon God. And I more or less stayed in the Old Testament, but let me give you one in the New Testament of Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus' prayer to receive his sight. And I believe Bartimaeus was praying before Jesus came on the scene. And that prayer that he was praying wasn't a one-time prayer, but I believe he was continuously praying so that when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing by, he had one opportunity to get a miracle, and he recognized what was happening. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And somebody said, you're making too much noise. Hush your mouth. 
And he raised his voice even louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Because he couldn't miss his miracle. He couldn't miss his blessing. He couldn't miss his breakthrough. Question. Are you in a place where you need to pray a great prayer? Or in a place where you might need to pray one of your greatest prayer? Because you are in the greatest challenge of your life. And all of us here are facing challenges. Nobody's void of challenge. Life comes with challenges. So there are either two, two sets of people here. People who need to be praying great prayers or persons who need to be praying one of their greatest prayers they have ever prayed. What kind of prayer you need to pray when life is against you? How intense should be your prayer? How passionate should be your prayer? How powerful should be your prayer? When you're facing a lion's den. And you're not going to pray facing a lion's den. Or you're going before God facing a fiery furnace. What kind of prayer do you pray when, the, when you get the medical report that you have six months to live? What kind of prayer do you pray when you face an eviction? When you're facing divorce, what kind of prayer do you pray? When there is no money to buy food for the children, what kind of prayer do you pray? And sometimes I, I, I talk with people and, and it seems as if like I have the responsibility to pray. And I know I do have my responsibility to pray. But you have to reach a place where you have to learn to pray for yourself. Because you are going through. You heard just last night that a preacher said, he said, he said, like people, a pastor said, like people, people want you to, he said, after somebody who was in ministry for 30 years, and he said, people want you to go all night pray for them while they lie down in their bed and sleep. Amen. In fact, sometimes when people come to the altar for us to pray for them, you know, you ask yourself, you know, why are they not agreeing? Why, they, why are they not a part of what is happening? Why are they not, not opening up themselves to receive? And you are there like you want it more than they do. You want God to bless them more than they want the blessing. But I want to inform us this morning... From those of you who are viewing over Facebook on YouTube, that you need, you must go through your Gethsemane. You must go through your great hour of prayer. There are no freebies here. And I know when God called you to something, God called us to something great. So we would never be financially able, educationally able. We would not be mature enough. We would not be strong enough. We would not have enough influence. When God calls you to do something, you are not equipped fully to do it. But God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called and one of the ways in which he qualifies us is through our intercession as we pray and we seek the Lord. Show me your altar and I'll tell you who you are. Or show me who you are and I will tell you your altar. Because we need to spend that time with God. I go through four points quickly as I seek to. I don't want to go too long. 
But Jesus' prayer, as we look at it, it was a personal prayer. And it was a personal prayer, one out of for two reasons. One, he took his disciples, 11 of them. Judas was not with them. And he carried them to pray in the garden. He left uh, eight of them. And, and he took the other three with him a little further. And then he went beyond them to pray. So he went alone to pray because some things you have to talk to God, you alone. Jesus himself, when he was teaching, he said in Matthew 6, verse 6, when you pray, go, uh, when you pray, go into your closet, shut the door, and pray to the Father in secret. And the Father who sees in secret, he will reward you openly. So without any secret prayer, there will not be any open reward. But what was interesting in the whole scenario is that the very people who he was expecting to support him in prayer, when he came back looking for them to see how they're doing, and while they were there backing him up in prayer, they were sleeping. His prayer was a personal prayer. And he asked the question, what? Could you not watch with me at least one hour? The Bible says of Jacob in, in Genesis 32 and verse 24 that Jacob was left alone. And you know sometimes God leaves us alone. And when God leaves you alone, you could either feel as a victim or a victor. Because many times when persons feel left alone, they feel as if they're the victim in it. God has taken away everybody and they're alone and they're helpless and they're weak. Uh, uh, but, but it's not that you're helpless and you're weak, but God brings us to a place where he places us uh, in a place or a position where we have to be alone. There's a time to be alone. Come on, turn to your name and say, there's a time to be alone. There are times we don't need friends with us. And sometimes, you know, we always need to see somebody or feel somebody supporting us. If nobody's supporting you, trust me, God is supporting you. Amen. He's right there with you to take you through. <laughs> Secondly, the prayer was a purposeful prayer. He was not praying. He was praying, rather, about his cup of suffering and the will of God to be fulfilled. Because that was his purpose. That, was, that is what he was called to do. There is nothing like accepting your purpose, that which you are called to do. You know, God called you to do it, and he accepted. This is, this is my purpose. This is my calling. This is, this is what, this is what I, I've been meant to do. Amen. You know, I remember being called into, in, in, into pastoring, and I say, okay. And I had to get to the place of accepting that. Because the first time God calls me, I say, God, you, you got the wrong man. Amen. But could I say to you that you're the right man or you're the right woman this morning? You are the right woman. You are the right man. Is, 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 is we who don't like ourselves? Is we who think that we are not good enough. But you know, God wants to use people who think that they are not good enough because they will depend upon Him more than the person who is good enough. The Bible says not many wise, not many noble are called because the wise and the noble, when they are called, they, they, they become full of themselves. As if God needs them to do His will upon the earth. But he was, it, the prayer was a purposeful prayer as he was embracing his purpose. It was his calling. I want to declare this morning that nobody in this congregation will go to the, to the grave without fulfilling their purpose. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, make that declaration on your life in the name of Jesus. Make that declaration that you will fulfill your purpose upon the earth in the name of Jesus. Some of you, like you're still watching me, I ask you to open your mouth and make a declaration. Let your ears hear what your mouth is saying. Thirdly, his prayer was a passionate prayer. While he was praying, the Bible says in Luke 22, 43, 44, that there appeared an angel unto him, and the angel ministered unto him, strengthened him, because the sweat from his brow was as great drops of blood. Wasn't just drops of blood, you know. Great drops of blood. So you know, sometimes people are sweating and you're seeing you're seeing the sweat running down. Real perspiration coming down. And the perspiration that was coming was not just sweat, but it was blood. And the, and, and the scripture said it was great drops of blood. You know, people sweat all the time, and you see people real sweating. And if you're in the gym or whatever, or you, or you run around the park, you see people sweating. But this wasn't just any ordinary sweat. This was great sweat that brought great drops of blood with it. His prayer was a passionate prayer. Sometimes you see persons praying and no emotion. Like if you ain't going through anything. But trust me, that same person, if you get them angry, they will open their mouth and they will tell you off because they have emotions. All of us have emotions. But when it comes to the things of God, we, we just passionless. Let me tell you, the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we go before God, we go with passion as we believe God, as we cry out unto God, as we say, God, that you will bless me. When you face, your, amen, your, your greatest hour of temptation, your greatest hour of desertion, your greatest hour, amen, of persecution, amen, you have to pray. And could I say, that because our path is our path, because our call is our call, because the gift and the calling of God is without repentance, God will lead us through a path in life where we just have to go through. And let me tell you this, when you're going through Gethsemane, when you're going through your path rider, rather, like the disciples, if you didn't pray, you will run for your life. You're running for your life. Why? Because you didn't pray. When you don't pray, you're like the disciples. You're running for your life. You're like Peter. I don't know him. Somebody in school is going to get sick. Somebody in the office is going to get sick sometime in the future and they would need prayer and you would just stand there and watch them. You who have been called by God, you who have that particular path in life because you didn't pray, because there was no Gethsemane, your opportunity come for ministry. And you can't even say, God, bless my friend, bless my colleague, raise them up in the name of the Lord. Fourthly, his prayer was a prolonged prayer. It wasn't a short prayer. It was a prolonged prayer. I remember as a young Christian, I went into the church. I asked the uh, custodian for the key. And he allowed me to go into the church just to pray. And I said, I'm going into church to pray for an hour. And I remember going into church to pray for an hour. And I began my prayer. 
I say, God bless me, and I began to pray for family, and I pray for friends, and I pray, and I pray for the nation, and I pray, I pray for the world, I pray for America, I pray, man, I pray, I pray for, I pray for Russia, I pray for China, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray for, I pray for all kind of people and all kind of things. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, and when I looked at my watch, it was 15 minutes gone. I said, Lord, only 15 minutes with all I pray. And I recognize I didn't have the spiritual muscle to even pray for an hour as I ought to. Amen. And, and our prayers could be short because if I didn't make a decision to pray for an hour, after I had prayed all that prayer, within 15 minutes, minutes, I would have stopped praying. Since that time, I pray with clock. I have the, watch, the clock on my phone or my watch because I'm setting a time to pray. Because I realized from that experience, and those of you who have been here a while, you've heard it already. I recognize from that experience, if you don't play with, pray with clock, you're in trouble. So the Bible was able to say, at the end of every hour, when an hour, come back. You know what should be at least one hour? In my estimation, he prayed for three hours. And that's Jesus. So three hours may have been sufficient for him. For us, it may take more than three hours. Nehemiah said day and night. He was there praying and fasting day and night. How much prayer is that, Sister Delana? That is plenty prayer. That is all day prayer. That is whole night prayer. Just praying day and night that God, He will restore Jerusalem, restore your people, oh God. And the Bible says he, he wept because the burden that was upon Him. And sometimes I feel there is no burden upon us. So there is no passion to pray. So we have to wait until we're facing death or we're facing eviction. Or the bank coming to take the car. Or we are facing divorce. Separation. And the truth is, whether we pray or not, those things will come. So we have to pray. So when trials come, we will be able to face them. Because trials coming. Trials coming. We had, a, we had a testimony this morning, so allow me, Brother David, to use your testimony. Brother David was given a testimony of when his wife was in hospital. And he, say, he prayed, he said, God, whatever happens here, I will serve you all the days of my life. And then he also prayed. He said, God, you are God. Bring my wife out of the hospital. And as I listened to him give the testimony, I thought about it and I said, you know why God answered his second prayer? Because he prayed the first prayer. Because many of us will backslide if our wives leave us. Death or life. Or if your husband in fact, I, I'm in church a while. I see people break up. Boyfriend and girlfriend break up. You ain't even married to the person. But you're going, you leave in the Lord and you're going to hell because somebody break your heart. If you only come around 10 years later, you will say, thank God for sparing me from that relationship. What are you stressing yourself about that for? But you see, we have to pray. I remember Sister Nanan saying to me, 
she said, I prayed and I said, God, if my children don't serve the Lord, take them. When she said that to me, that thing resonated within my heart because she didn't just say it casually. She said it with passion from, from the depth of her own spirit that she says, Pastor, I prayed and I said to God, if my children do not serve the Lord, take them. And I said, my God, Robert alive and Liz alive today because they're serving the Lord. Because while they were still toddlers or, or, or preteens or even teenagers, God would have taken them to heaven because their mother, mother prayed and said, God, if they don't want to serve you, take them. How many of us could pray that prayer? How many of us could go before God with such passion and say, God, bless me. This is what I want you to do for me. Time to close. So, yep, time to close. I ask a question as we close. What are you going through presently? What are you going through presently? You know. What kind of prayer you need to pray? I want to encourage us to follow the example of Jesus. Let's apply these principles when we go to pray. Because unless we get to that place of praying and seeking and calling upon God, nothing will happen within our lives. Amen. Nothing will happen. There's a reason why sometimes people in church 20 years, 25 years, and they're still there. And some people in church 5 years, and God bless them. You must go through or get seminary to get that victory in Calvary. Stand with me as we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh God, I thank you. I bring every brother, every sister. I bring your people before you today in the name of the Lord Jesus that God, you by your Holy Spirit, God, you will touch our hearts and our lives and you will truly minister unto us by your Holy Spirit. God, we have some difficult, difficult, difficult situations that we are going through presently and God, we have not entered into our great hour of prayer. Oh God, I we call upon you today in the name of Jesus. And God, we call fasting and some people not fasting. Some people not crying out unto you. Oh God, they're still eating. But in the name of Jesus, we break, we break, we break, we break every stronghold of the enemy in the name of Jesus as we go through this great hour of prayer in the name of Jesus. Some of us, it's our greatest hour of prayer. Oh, that person that is facing divorce, a greatest hour of prayer. That person who is facing eviction, that greatest hour of prayer in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that person who is in hospital, who needs to pray. Oh God, we call upon your name this morning that God, you will intervene and you will minister by your Holy Spirit. And God, we say thank you for the victory. Come on, open your mouth with me and give God some praise for the victory. Give God some praise for doing the supernatural. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for breakthroughs this morning in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for taking me through my Gethsemane in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we go through our Gethsemane this morning. In the name of Jesus, we're going through. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We're going through our Gethsemane in the name of Jesus. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. God, we're not there yet. So we call upon your name. Oh, God, there's a glass ceiling that God is preventing us from getting where we're supposed to get to. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you. God, we're here too long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody to pull out their index finger with me, please. Pull out your index finger. Amen. 
and I want you to look at your neighbor straight in their eyes and tell them you're here too long. Come on. You're here too long. Come on, tell somebody else. Wait, wait, wait. Are you not doing it right? We're not smiling and we're not laughing. Get your serious face, not your vexed face. Get your serious face and go again. And say to them, you're here too long. You're here too long. Come on. And all you're saying it, you're here too long. Soft, 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 soft. When you're talking to your child or somebody who you're giving a warning to or something stern to, you heralding what you're saying. One last time. I want you to shout at the person and bowl them up now. But I want you to say to them a little louder, you are here too long. We're here too long. We're here too long. The ceiling there, last year, year before, the year before that, the year before that. We're here too long. We need to move from here. We need to pray some of our greatest prayers because we're here too long and we're just floating through life. Case era, era, as if nothing is happening and we are going through. You're going to face our greatest hour of temptation. And some people in the temptation already. Some people in the crisis already. Some people in the frustration already. Amen. But there, because there was no altar in Gethsemane, there is no victory in the temptation and the desertion. Amen. Time to close. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody here this morning you're not saved? I think there's somebody. Go ahead with me one more time. You're here and you're not saved. You're not saved. You're, you, you, you're invited to church, but you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. We don't want to close this part of the service without giving you an opportunity to say yes to God. If you're here and you're not saved, you're not born again, and you need Jesus into your heart, to come into your heart. Amen. One person. You, you know if Jesus is to come at this time, you're not prepared to meet him. You know that. You, you, you don't feel that you're prepared to meet him. Is there somebody else? Amen. Just want to lift your hands. Lift your hands with me. And if you're viewing online, I see a second person. If you're viewing online, put up the raised hand icon. Three persons. Is there a fourth person? A fourth person lifting your hand? Amen. Amen. You're not saved. You're not born again in this season. Amen. Where we see the sign, biblical, uh, prophetic, biblical prophecies being fulfilled. You need to say yes to God. Is there somebody else? You need to say yes to God. Hallelujah. You're not saved. You know if Jesus is to come now, you're not prepared to meet him. I'm talking to you. There's another person here who needs to say yes to God. Talking to you. You're not saved. You're not born again of the Spirit of God. And you need to say yes to God. You need to say yes to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those of you who are online, I want to encourage you. Amen. We put up the raise hand icon. Amen. But because we are believing the Lord, God is able to save you and God is able to deliver you. God is able to do great things within your life. Amen. And you're here in church. Let me tell you, if you've been in church today, not in church tomorrow. If you need to say yes to God, say yes to God. I'm calling those who lifted their hands. Let's come and join me at the altar. Let's come and join me at the altar here. Those of you who lifted their hands. All of you who lifted their hands, come please. Amen. Come, come and join me at the altar. All of you who lifted their hands. Hallelujah. 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 If you lifted your hands, come and join me at the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a time I stood at this altar, giving my heart to Jesus Christ. I don't know what would have happened to me. I don't know. I was a bit confused. But I was 30-something years ago when Jesus came into my heart and he transformed my life. There's a real God who is able to transform your life and make you a new person. The things I used to do, I couldn't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I just couldn't go again. Things I used to say, I couldn't say again. What saved me? There are people here know, know what I'm talking about. Saved by the power of God, transformed by Jesus Christ. We, we just can't be the same. God is able to save your soul. And years from now, you look back and say, wow, look what the Lord has done. Even you young people here, I want to encourage all of you to go to camp also. Amen. You are part of the camp. Amen. Talk to Sister Jokes and tell us, Pastor, say, to make it happen. For you to go to camp. Amen. In the name of Jesus. All right. Make it happen. Pastor say make it happen. So I hear. <laughs> Amen. Now I, I, I for years telling people come come free and come. And I think I want to change. All right. God is God is God. And God does miracles. Amen. So I want to lead you in a prayer. I want you to say the prayer from your heart. You know, and ask the Lord to come into your heart. So you bow your heads and just say the prayer after me and, and let the prayer come and, 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 you know, say it from your heart. Congregation, help them as, as they say the prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you recognizing that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I come to you accepting Jesus into my life, into my heart. I ask you, God, that you will forgive me of all my sins, that you will wash me in the blood of Jesus, that you will make me a new person, a new creature in Christ. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life, I endeavor to live for him, to serve him in spirit and in truth. And God, I thank you for saving me, for keeping me, and for satisfying me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, these that stand at this altar, I pray for them. I pray, God, that you will touch them. That the hand of God will be upon their lives. And God, the transforming work of Jesus Christ will so transform them that they will never be the same again. Come on, let's be, believe with me. Amen. Make some declarations right where you are. They may not even hear you because there's a lot of us saying it. So give them some good blessing this morning. Those who are online, who are on Facebook and YouTube, oh, we declare that you are blessed in the name of Jesus, that the hand of God will be upon you in your going out, in your coming in, in the name of Jesus, that you will be a child of God walking in newness of life life, being blessed and highly favored of God. God, I say thank you for doing this mighty work in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You can go back to your seats. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to, to, to be a part of the convert class. Amen. Brother Michael may not have any. Brother Michael, wave your hand so they can see you. And Brother Michael will get your name so that we can have convert class. In fact, we have baptism this Saturday coming. Amen. I think there's about eight persons to be baptized on this Saturday. So, so we are celebrating, thanking God for still saving. And those who have come in, some of them would now need to join the class so that when we have our next baptism, they can be. Baptism is not an option. 
Amen. But it is where you should be baptized. Amen. And then um, you should repent rather and then be baptized. If you repent and you're not baptized, you're walking in disobedience. And you probably need to get saved. Because when you're saved, you seek to get baptized. In my estimation. Amen. But we can't close. And I have you standing a while. But we can't close. And I want the brother Bobby to get the mic. Amen. Because Minister Safia had a word from God. And a word that God would also set to her to write down. That she could declare it to the people. And she would, and I want her to come and to share that word from the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, brethren. Even as I share the word, I'm praying, God, that those who know God's voice, that you would lock in. This is the word of the Lord unto the house of Saint James Pentecostal. Today I erect a wall in the camp. And I, Safia, I saw the wall. It was tall and filled with fire. The Lord said, Those that are mine or those that are for me. I put on one side and those against me I put on the other. Today I cut you in two. Today I divide asunder this house. I am stirring hearts. I'm mending eyes. I am mending hearts. I am mending minds. Crooked and bent out of shape, I will make you straight. Choose today, but know you are choosing forever. Today, I require of you a decision. Are you for me or against me? You ask within yourself, who will go against this great God? Yet you have gone against me. You have not obeyed my voice. You have prioritized your wants over mine. Your prayer is nothing more than vanity before me. You ask for great blessings, which are yours to ask for. But you only ask for blessings. What blesses me? Bless me, my people. I ask you today, as you ask me every day, bless me, oh my people. Bless me. Am I of worth to you? That you come only to me in need? I mourn for you. For some of you are lost and don't even know it. You are not mine. Repent in your heart. Repent forever and not just for today. Stay with me and don't leave tomorrow. Today I draw a line with my finger. Today I separate you. Today those that are mine will hear me in their hearts even now. And those that are not mine will feel fear. You are not mine. But choose me today and forever and I will take you to myself. And you will become mine. Choose me for today. Only because you fear and you will not be mine. Choose. Choose today and choose forever. This is the word of the Lord unto the house of St. James Pentecostal. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for that word. Song says, which side are you leaning on? And I'm leaning on the Lord's side. But it's more than leaning, it's standing on the Lord's side. Standing in God, standing in Jesus Christ. But God is about to do a new thing among us. Amen. God is confirming his word. In that which we have been praying and believing for. Souls being saved, people being baptized in the Holy Spirit. God is doing. Amen. In this new season. And we give God praise for the victory. Amen. Uh, those of you who are online, I do want to close the service at this time because we have a time of prayer. Amen. In the house of the Lord. So we say 
May the Lord bless us and keep us. And may the Lord allow his face to shine upon us. Lift up his countenance upon us. Give us peace. Give us strength in our going out and in our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And everyone say, Amen.